All right, welcome YouTube. So today what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be making a subwoofer or a powered subwoofer for a surround sound system. I know I've been having a lot of uh, people ask me for this since I posted the my one of my first videos on how to make a regular speaker wire into a coaxial or mineral or whatever you wanna call them. So I'm gonna be showing how to make a subwoofer that would usually go in your car into your surround sound system and make it boom very loud. So what all the things that you need, you need obviously your subwoofer, an amplifier like you would have in your car, some kind of box that you're gonna put it in so you can actually have that sound resonate. Uh, some kind of power supply. The best you can possibly get for this kind of application is, that's upside down, is something, not this one specifically, but something from a computer, a computer's uh, power supply. This one is matched very well with my current setup and I'll show you that later on in the video and what you need to be looking for. But power supply to power that whole thing up to, or power that, that powers that, which is put in there to make boom. So, um, let's get started. So the three things that you need to be looking at is the amp, the subwoofer, and your power supply. What I have written down here is the different specs that I have on mine. This is my power supply. So at 12 volts, I'm doing 32 amps. And as you saw beforehand, my amp can go up to 40 amps total. So the more amps you have, the better, but not past that. This would be my subwoofer going up to 275 watt RMS. And this is my amp which goes up to 300 watt RMS. So they're very close. So obviously the first step that you need to do is make sure all of your stuff works. Um, I already know that my amp and subwoofer work because those used to be in my car a while ago. Um, but how to test your power supply, uh, like I said, this is the best way to do it. You can also get, uh, I've seen people do it with the original Xbox um, their power supply, but uh, I have a much bigger setup so it wouldn't power it as well. Uh, I'll show you guys the pairing. Um, so to figure out, make sure that this works, you're going to find the big fat cable, and this is the one that goes to the motherboard on a computer. It's uh, 12, um, sometimes, or not 12, it's 24 and sometimes it has a little extra one here on the side. Doesn't matter, you get the big one, that's the one that you want. Uh, you can look up the pin configuration. Um, I'll go ahead and put up mine. So this is what you're gonna be looking at. All these different colors, you don't have to worry about any of that except for two. As you can see right here, this is green, the only green one, and also according to the little sketch that I, or the diagram that I have up here, this is the on. This is telling the computer to turn on when you press the button. Um, you can have it plugged in into the wall like you always do with the switch on the back on and this will not turn on until it is told to be turned on like when you press the button. So all you have to do is put some kind of lead from the green one, so this is four in, so I went one, two, three, four in, and just connect it to one of the blacks. All the blacks are gonna be ground. So just up and down. So it's connecting the green and the black. You can do it with any other one. You can also cut these and join them in the bottom. I mean, if you're not gonna use this power supply for anything, I mean, these power supplies run maybe 20 bucks, 20, 30 bucks, very, very, very cheap. Um, and plus, you can get these guys at a pawn, pawn shop for almost nothing. Same thing with the box. Um, so join these up, cut them, join them together, whatever you need to do. And once that's done, you're going to plug it into the wall. I already got this one plugged into the wall. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do this with one hand, but I'm going to plug this in. There it goes. Movie magic, you know. 
and right now it's on the off position. If I turn it on, you can see the fan starts. It's not very loud, obviously it's for a uh, computer, so it's gonna be nice and quiet. But that's how you know that it's working, and you can start the next step now that you know that all of your stuff is working. And just a quick note for mine, just in case you guys were wondering, I did not want to buy a single box, so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be using my double you know, used for two 12s, because I only have one that I'm using for this. Having two would just be absurd. Um, so instead of buying a single box, uh, I'm just going to put this one to use. I'm going to put uh, my subwoofer on the bottom one, and the ventilation in here, I'm going to go ahead and block off. I've already got something stuffed in there nice and tight, so all the airflow is going to come straight through and cycle up through this vented portion. And I'm just going to put everything in a little cubby hole so, I mean, even though it looks like crap, it's going to look a lot better until I actually re-carpet the thing. Okay, so your next step is you're going to separate out these wires. I know it's a whole lot of confusing mess if you don't know anything about computers or wiring, but I'm going to make this super simple for anyone to understand. Alright, so you're going to separate these out. You're going to have your big one, your main one, the one I told you about that's going to go into your motherboard. And like I said, that's the only thing you got to do to it, so leave that alone. The next thing you have to do is get all of these guys. Now normally, um, the colors that I'm going to be explaining here are uh, going to be towards most models, but make sure you check exactly, I mean, just Google it and see what kind of um, supply unit you have and what pin, what color or what. But this goes for a lot of them. This is the uh, an ATX layout. So this goes for all the ones on here. So the yellow ones are the only ones that we're going to be, I mean, besides the ground, the black. Um, the yellow ones are the only ones we're going to be concerned about. So we're going to be cutting yellow wires off here, which is going to be your 12 volt power supply. We're going to be using those to plug into our amp over there to power that. So we're going to be uh, cutting a few of these off. Any of these, it does not matter. Just trace it from the back, clip some, it doesn't matter how long or short, as long as it reaches. But I'm going to be going to the end of the clip, clipping them off, stripping them back. I'll show you guys what it's going to look like. And then I'm going to twist them all together. You do not want to use just one wire, especially if you're using something uh, larger, like what I'm having, around 300 RMS pushing through here. You're not going to want to have one single wire being plugged in. Yes, it'll work but you're having a whole lot of watts running through that. It's going to sound like crap, and it's gonna burn out that one. So just cut off multiple ones, uh, enough to where it's gonna fit into your power supply. I'll show you that, or your uh, power on your amp. Uh, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna bunch the yellow ones, which are 12 volts, and then you're gonna find the black ones, some on this side, some over here, you're gonna bunch those together, do the same thing, strip them. So, I mean, I've got one over here that looks like it. Strip that, that back so you can expose the wires that's on there. You're gonna twist them together and they're gonna go on the ground side of that. So that's the first thing you're gonna do. You don't have to worry about these other ones, the red ones, the orange ones. Those are uh, different voltages that we do not want because they're not, 12 is your, your most powerful one. The other ones is like a, a uh, 5 volt and a 3 volt, you don't want to worry about those. Your 12 volts is what you want. Alright, so this is what it looks like. It's got the heat shrink on there, so I'm going to take that off. Now that I've taken that off, I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of take this uh, shielding back just a little bit so it's not up here and I don't have to work with it. Alright, now that that is moved down a little bit and out of my way, I'm going to cut off right at the end right here. I mean, these the, the bunch that I have right now is just yellow and black, so I don't have to worry about separating out the other ones, so I'm just going to cut it all off right up here at the top, and that's what it looks like after I cut it off. Now, like I said, I'm going to separate these out. Come here, you little booger. There we go. So I'm going to separate these out, yellows and the black, and then strip the wires up at the top. All right, and this is what it's going to look like once it is stripped down yellows and the blacks. Now I don't like how how small that gauge is. 
or large, depending on the context in which you are saying gauge, but I want it to be bigger or a smaller gauge in terms of number. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to another cable that I have out here that is also just yellow and black. So I'm gonna repeat the same process, the, you know, all the heat shrink stuff on here, cut it off at the top and strip the wires. And there we go, these are done. And along with the other ones over here, which is gonna give it a nice healthy gauge. So now we combined what we got here, the yellows and the black. Combine those together. Uh, if you want to zip tie them or grab some electrical tape and kind of wrap it around here to make it a little bit more clean. And uh, let me do that real quick. All right, and that's what it's going to look like once I am done and once you are done. Everything is stripped and bunched together. I also uh, taped them together, a little bit of electrical tape here, and joined them so it's kind of like one big wire here. And my other wire I got set to the side and any of the other wires that you don't use, it's not a problem. As long as you kept the clips on them, don't worry about it. If for some reason uh, you don't use all of these, go ahead and cut the tip off and um, you can use tape at the end of it. Just make sure it doesn't touch anything else that's metal or it could short it out, create a fire, or something like that. But I'm gonna use all these. So the next step is I'm gonna twist all of these together to make one. And I'm gonna plug it into this guy right here, my amplifier. Now, a good thing to know about your amplifier is if you, I mean, obviously this is a car amplifier. So when you're in a car, this thing isn't on 24 seven or it would ruin your battery and drain it down. So all you have to do is create the same thing that we did for your power supply. You have to trick this to let it know, to let it know that uh, it should be running. So we put a uh, lead from the remote to the battery. That's all you need to do. So whenever this gets power, it thinks that it, the car, the usually when you put the key in the ignition and as soon as you turn it, it sends power to this. That's the same thing that it's doing here. But once it reaches, it receives power here, it's also giving it to the remote, telling it to turn on or the key is in the ignition on the on portion. So once you put your leads in battery or power and then ground your yellow and your black, that should be set for that one. So let's get that done. All right, and this is an example of what it's gonna look like. Uh, I've got everything twisted together here on the ground. And if you do uh, decide to do something like this, uh, as you can see on here, this is the layout that I have for my amp. It's the screw that goes down. So you can buy these at any uh, auto parts store. That's where I got mine. And um, I just got these, it works for I doubt it can zoom in that much, but these work for anywhere between 10 and 12 gauge. So all I did for this one is I just slipped it on like that. And all I have to do now is crimp it down. It creates a, a little bit cleaner, but you don't even have to do that. You can leave it just like this and uh, fit it into your amp and just clamp it down with the screws. So I'm gonna go ahead and clamp that down and connect it to my amp. All right, so this is what they're gonna look like once I'm done and I go, uh, went ahead and I crimped those on there. Um, I went and put electrical tape on here too because uh, I, I stripped these wires a little bit too long and I had some showing on the bottom. So I didn't want anything uh, ever touching those just in case uh, either another wire came loose or something decided to touch that and short it out or you know anything to prevent any kind of fire. So now that these are together, I'm going to put them in here. Oh, wrong one. I'm going to put these in here and I'm going to screw them down. And once I'm done with that, then we'll finish up. All right, now I got these nice tight in place screwed down. Um, also remember that I still have that lead going from the remote to the battery. So it, it turns this on when you provide power. So now that that is done, the next step that we need to do is hook up our subwoofer. 
Now, I do not have a mono block here, but I can bridge it, as it says right there, bridged. So I can bridge it, I put a wire into the positive and the negative in here, onto the positive and the negative on my subwoofer. So that's the next step, but before I do that, I need to mount my subwoofer. Well, first I need to put the speaker wire onto my subwoofer and then mount it into place and feed the wire up to the top where I'll be keeping it. All right, now I got it over here. I've got my subwoofer mounted in place and the speaker wire connected to it and coming up to the top. Ta-da! Well, that guy's up there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect it to the bridge portion that I showed you earlier and then mount my amplifier up here and also put this in, maybe mount it if I want to. All right, there's a subwoofer. You can say, kind of see through there that I got that wire leading up there. Um, I didn't mount anything in place yet because I still need to test it. So I have my power supply facing this way so I can have it plugged in and whenever I need this to be turned on, or you can have it on all the time, all I have to do is press the on switch. Um, now that everything is hooked up, the last and final thing that you need to do, besides plugging it in and testing it, is you need to, at least for uh, my subwoofer, the back of my receiver, it needs a mineral or a RCA kind of end thing that you guys are all familiar with, one of these guys. So mine, I need to plug into the L right here, because it says if you want to make it into a mono instead of stereo, plug it into the left channel. That's uh, like most things that you'll run into if you if you get something like that. If it is speaker, if yours is speaker wire, same thing, speaker wire into the back of yours, which is speaker wire, or watch my other video on how to convert wire, a regular speaker wire, into one of these and then they can connect into one happy family. So I'm gonna plug this in and we'll see how this all works out and how it sounds. All right, so I got everything plugged in for a test run. Um, I've been doing this whole thing with the video, so just like those other videos that you probably watched before this one, they've already had the whole thing done. So I've got this end now plugged into my receiver and uh, real quick over here I have the other end plugged into a power strip over there. I've got my PlayStation on turn it down for what? So uh, we're gonna see what uh, what the bass sounds like. Um, I also put my amplifier this way because I do have input sensitivity right here so it's easily accessible like if I want to turn down the bass a little bit, I don't have to turn down the volume on my receiver. I can just come over here and turn down the bass a little bit. So I've got everything on. As you can see, it is powered up. It's there a little red light on there. The fan is going on here. So uh, let's, let's, uh, let's see how this sounds. pretty quiet right now so I don't disturb my neighbors but again it is only on one so let's see what happens when we turn this thing up on the song um, yeah so that is uh, that's a decent amount of bass there everything matching up um, that is fully on max on uh, on that one I turned it up to it's nice and loud not something uh, you probably want in an apartment which is where I am at but uh, that's how everything comes together she says bye <laughs>